is anyone that is defined as a relative, ranging from grandparents, parents, uh, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, cousins, children, uh, grandchildren, and so on. It is an ethical as well as a religious uh, obligation to maintain ties with our relatives, with our relations. It has become even more significant in our uh, modern time as the notion of maintaining relations between family members, we can see that it is fading slowly. It is dying out. Uh, maintaining relations and embracing heritage has become something of the past, unfortunately. While our grandparents and our parents made sure to keep and maintain these family ties, we notice nowadays, especially in the contemporary uh, culture and the shift from a large, uh, um, large communal families into a nuclear family, which is considered a type of a modern family. And this is growing. We notice that this shift is happening. And people are becoming more uh, individual they're embracing individuality more than being together as a group um, people are being just less concerned and they're not even considering it a priority to keep that connection and keep that relationship with their near kin if this keeps and continu keeps continuing then we will notice the appearance of a family, you know, will not be there anymore. We won't be seeing families anymore. And we'll only be concerned with ourselves. This shift in the society, moving from being family-centric into individualistic, has some serious ramifications. This is something that is really difficult. We have observed that communities who abandoned that system or that connection and network between their family members and they embraced pure individualism. We've seen so many um, uh, issues and social problems that they're facing. The deterioration of uh, the family uh, self-centered relationships never serve a true lasting purpose. This is why Islam puts a special emphasis uh, on uh, maintaining family ties, on what we call filatur rahim, uh, maintaining relations with blood relatives. This is something that is uh, important. Actually cutting or severing ties with your blood relatives is one of the major sins in Islam. It is a sin. It is disliked by Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are not allowed, we are prohibited from severing and cutting ties with our blood relatives. So in tonight's um, talk, I would like to touch upon three main points. The first point is what is the definition or what is Silatul Raham? Maintaining family relations. Number two, what is the importance of it? And number three, what are some of the reasons for um, severing ties? Inshallah, we will discuss it after hearing aloud salawat. Salatul Raham is basically any behavior that is generally considered kind, good, gracious. Uh, or obligatory when it's directed towards the other side. When it's the, the, and the other side is one of your blood relatives, like your grandparents, parents, uh, uncles, aunts, cousins, uh, brothers and sisters, children, grandchildren, so on and so forth. Those are all your rahim. Those are all considered your relatives according to Islam. And any behavior, any good gesture, any good act, any kind act towards them is considered silatul rahim, is considered connecting 
and keeping that connection with them. Our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq salam, said, إن صلة الرحم والبر ليهونان الحساب ويعصمان من الذنوب فصلوا أرحامكم وبروا بإخوانكم ولو بحسن السلام ورد الجواب The kindness towards relatives and goodness towards the believing uh, brothers makes your reckoning, makes the accounting on the day of judgment easy. And it protects you from sins. So you should be kind to your relatives and be good to your believing brothers, even if it is as little as a sincere salam. That when you meet them, you sincerely greet them with a proper salam alaikum. Or a hearty reply to their salam. If they started greeting you, then you respond in a nice, uh, in a sincere, in a hearty manner, the alaykum as salam, even as little as that. So the Imam salamullahi alayhi is telling us that, look, even that little, that little of salam and alaykum as salam must remain between family members. There might be issues, there might be difficulties, there might be problems that are happening, but let it not reach to the point where you cut ties and burn bridges. A simple salam and a sincere one, the Imam said, not just any salam. A sincere salam needs to be there at least between uh, blood relatives and family members. The Imam salamullahi alayhi in another place he said, Sil rahimak walaw bishirbatin min ma. Maintain ties with your relatives and with your near ones, even if it's as little as offering a glass of water to them. So it is important to keep ties with your relatives. There are uh, different levels of maintaining ties. Shaheed al-Thani, Shaykh Zain al-Din ibn Ali al-Jaba'i al-Amili, who is one of our greatest scholars, who was martyred about 450 years ago. He has so many great works, and some of his works are actually uh, textbooks in the uh, in the houses from that time and until today. And they are taught and referred to in the houses all around the world. Amongst his well-known texts is Rawd al-Bahiyya fi Sharh al-Lum'a al-Dimashqiyya and Masalik um, al-Afham ila tanqihi sharaya al-Islam. He describes the various levels of Silat al-Raham. He says the first and best level of Silat al-Raham is when you consider your relatives as yourself. Meaning you wish for them whatever you wish for yourself. You hate for them what you hate for yourself. You like for them what you like for yourself. You consider them like your, your own self. You're very, very close to them. That's the best form of Silat uh, al-Raham and maintaining family ties. There is one level under, as uh, Shahid al-Thani mentions, is that you don't consider them as yourself. But when they are in a state of difficulty, when they are in a state of hardship, you go and offer them assistance. You go and offer them help. You don't leave them facing you know, the difficulties of their lives alone. Next is we must try to constantly benefit our kith and kin, our relatives. Of course, within the means of, uh, within the boundaries of Islam, not something that exceeds what Islam permits. So in areas where they need help, you help them out. Uh, this benefit can be either something economic, social, uh, helping them being more independent, uh, securing them a job, initiating them a trade, or even a simple sound advice or spiritual guidance or religious teaching, any form of help and support that you can give them. The fourth stage is of Salat al-Raham is that you do good towards the dependents of your relatives. For example, the wife of your brother or the stepmother. They are the dependents of your relatives. 
your brother and your father, for example, they're, they're, they're your direct relatives. But the stepmother and the wife of the brother, they're not necessarily relatives. So being kind to the dependents of your relatives. The simplest kind, as Shahid al-Thani mentions of Salat al-Raham, is to say salam whenever you see them. You know the simple salam alaykum alaykum as -salam. Even if there is a conflict, when they enter into a place, you don't act as if you didn't see them. No, you go and say salam alaykum. The minimum of salam alaykum has, must, must remain. A lesser kind is conveying salam through someone. Let's say you, I live in a, in a city that is, uh, my brother lives in a city that's far from here. And I see one of you going to that city. So I tell you, if you get to see my brother, say salam on my behalf. Or if one of his neighbors is close, I tell him, send my salams to my brother, you know, say salam to my brother on my behalf. You know, this is even, you know, uh, a lesser kind of maintaining that connection. What is even smaller is praying and offering dua for them, praying for them sincerely um, while they are present or when they are absent. That connection must remain. That connection must remain. Cutting or severing the family ties is one of the major sins. So Shahid Thani is explaining all the different type levels. Even if it's just as simple as a dua and conveying of salam, it must remain between blood relatives no matter what kind of problem or conflict happens between them. Islam wants us to keep that relationship. Islam does not want us to sell our family at any cost. Never cut the relationship at any cost. This will lead us to the second point, which is what is the importance of Salat al -Rahm? Now, the main and the most important reason is that it is a commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One who maintains family ties is obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's doing what Allah has commanded. It's submitting to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you're fulfilling your duty towards Allah and you gain Allah's pleasure, then you have gained the best of two worlds, this world and the next. The other uh, important uh, or uh, benefit or reward of Salat al-Rahim is mentioned by Prophet Musa He once asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this question. What is the reward of one who does Salat al-Rahim, who maintains his ties with his relations? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered him. He said to him, O oh Musa, I postpone his death. Meaning, he will have a longer lifespan. He will live longer. Number two, I will make the sakaratul maut, the pangs of death, easy on him. Sakaratul maut are these last moments of one's life when the spirit is being separated from the body. This is a very, very difficult moment that we will all go through. But it will be easy for the one who maintains ties with his relations. This is what Allah promised Musa And the third reward is what? Allah will command the keepers of paradise to welcome this person and, ins and instruct him to enter paradise from whichever gate, whichever door he wishes. Means all the doors of paradise are open for such a person who maintains family ties. In addition to that, brothers and sisters, human beings are social by nature. We cannot rid, our, rid, uh, and, um, rid ourselves of others and live in isolation. And even if we live in isolation, then we will lead a very a life of loneliness and depression, which we naturally dread. We yearn for companionship. We yearn to know others. This is how we're created. This is how we're wired, brothers and sisters. Within a social fabric, there are units in which a person feels that he belongs to. The first and most important unit is the family. If 
the sense of belonging to the family is affected, it will affect his relations with all other social units uh, in, 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 in his life. So he won't feel that state of belonging to all other social units as well. So if his connection with the family is strong, then it will also be strong with other uh, people who are further away, who are not as close to him as his blood relatives. Our attachment, our engagement to others is part of our humanity. We are made like that. We are wired to care, concern, and have compassion to one another. This is what makes us human. One who does not have compassion and mercy towards others have lost, has lost an essential um, uh, essential part of his humanity. That's why Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi, in sermon 23 of Nahj al-Balagha, he says, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَسْتَغْنِ الرَّجُلْ وَإِنْ كَانَ ذَا مَالٍ عَنْ عَشِيرَتِهِ وَدِفَاعُهُمْ عَنْهُ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَلْسِنَتِهِمْ O oh people, surely no one, even the one who is rich and has a lot of wealth, no one can do without his kinsmen, their support, uh, and their support by their hands or by their tongues. There are most, they are mostly his support from behind. They can ward off from him all his troubles and conflicts. And they are the most kind to him when tribulations befall him. وَلِسَانُ الصِّدْقِ يَجْعَلُهُ اللَّهُ لِلْمَرْءِ فِي النَّاسِ خَيْرٌ لَهُ مِنَ الْمَالِ يُورِثُهُ غَيْرَهُ The honest tongue of praise that God would create for a man amongst others is much, much better than wealth which, will, which he will impart to others as inheritance when he passes away. Salat al-Raham makes you connected to a family. Makes you connected to, and the family is connected to the community. And being connected to large number of people, that by itself is a source of power. This is a source of strength. Connecting with kinship will render that effect. Our Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra, salamullahi alayha, in her famous speech, Al-Khutbah al fadakiya she said it. Connecting with kinship is a medium, is a way of increasing one's lifespan and results in an increase of friends and relations. And this is something that I've been taught in business school. That never undermine the benefit of networking. You will benefit greatly from knowing a lot of people. You'll gain from their experiences, you'll benefit from uh, their lifestyle, you'll have a new insight into on, on, on how to live life, different ways of living this life, gaining a, a different perspective of life, uh, getting um, you know offers, promotions for jobs. You'll have op opportunities in life, you'll have someone to seek for advice or support in difficult times. It builds confidence, it, get, it, gives, it gets you new ideas, and so on and so forth. The benefits of networking are so many. Islam has stressed a lot on it. And your family, this is a large group of people. And there are people who have gone through different experiences and different lives. You see how much benefit you'll get just from that close network that Allah has provided. There are many other benefits for Salat al-Rahm. Our fifth Imam, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir alayhi salam, he said, Salat al-Arham tutayyib al-nafs wa tazidu fi al-rizq. Establishing the bonds of kinship freshens the soul and increases sustenance. We see many people who take two or three jobs and work day and night 
to make money, to earn a living. And this is something that is good. Working is good. I'm not saying working is bad. But Imam is saying, if you want to increase your sustenance, then connect with your family members. Allah has made one of the means for increasing your sustenance is connecting with your own family members. If you maintain family ties, your sustenance will increase. Your sustenance increases, your lifespan increases, and your soul will freshen up. These are benefits that are promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. For those who keep and maintain their family ties. And the rewards in akhirah are much, much, much greater than that. Cutting relations with one's relative is amongst the major sins in Islam. And it is a reason to receive Allah's chastisement and punishment in this world before the next. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam for his love sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alihi Muhammad. So Allah in Surah Muhammad verse 22 he says فَهَلْ عَسَيْتُمْ إِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ أَن تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَتُقَطِّعُوا أَرْحَامَكُمْ But if you held command you were sure to make mischief in the land and cut off the ties of kinship. Notice how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relates making mischief on this earth, bringing, doing injustice and oppression in this earth and cutting off ties with one's kinship. He puts them both on the same level of immorality. The oppressor and the one who is committing injustice and mischief on this earth is the same immoral person as the one who is cutting ties with his relatives. Allah has put them in this ayah on the same level of immorality. I want to narrate to you a narration with regards to this issue. It's narrated that Shu'ayb al-Aqarqufi once asked our seventh Imam, Imam Musa al-Kadhim alayhi salam, he said that the Imam said to me, tomorrow a person by the name of Yaqub, who is an inhabitant of Maghrib, he's from Morocco, he shall meet you and inquire about me. When you see him and he inquires about me, guide him to my house. So on the next day, Shu'aib said that I found this man doing tawaf around the Kaaba, circumambulating around the Kaaba. So I inquired about his health and started talking to him and I realized that this man actually knows me. So I said to him, uh, from where do you know me? You know, we have never met before, how do you know me? He said, yesterday I saw in my dream, uh, someone said to me, meet Shu'aib and ask him whatever you desire to know. When I woke up, I asked the people, is there someone in this town, in this area, in this city named Shu'aib? And people were pointing to you. So this is how I realized you. Shu'aib says, I found this man, Yaqub, an intelligent person, a smart man. Uh, then when he requested to see the Imam, I showed him where the Imam's house is. Then we knocked on his door, we asked for permission to enter, the Imam granted us permission to enter his house. Once Imam al kadhim laid his eyes on uh, uh, Ya'qub, he said to him, Ya Ya'qub, you arrived here to Mecca yesterday. But on the way at such and such place, and he named him the exact location, there happened to be a fight between you and your own brother, where you hurled abuses and insulted each other. You were swearing at each other. Ya Ya'qub, this is neither our conduct, nor that is the religion of our forefathers. We do not approve such a conduct from, every, from anybody. You know, at times of anger, sometimes a person says things that, you know, he'll regret later on. So anyways, they were brothers, and you know, fights happen sometimes between siblings. So they were swearing at each other. Swearing, insulting, 
They abused each other. They used foul language. The Imam said, this is not our conduct. This is not the religion of our forefathers. Who is the forefathers of the Imam? Ahlul Bayt, Salamullah Rasulullah. The Imam does not approve it from anybody. Then he said, fear Allah who is one and has no partners. Very soon death shall cause a separation between both of you. And this is a consequence, the words of the Imam, this is a consequence of having broken the bond of kinship. Because those two broke that bond of kinship by swearing and insulting each other and having a fight between themselves, the consequence of that is that death shall separate them. They shall not meet again. So Yaqub immediately asked the Imam, may I be made your ransom? When am I going to die? The Imam said to him, surely your end also neared. Your death also neared. You were supposed to die, you're supposed to die soon. But you resolved your differences with your aunt in such and such place at such and such time. And because you re-establish the bonds of kinship with your aunt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has increased your life by 20 years. If it wasn't for that, your death would be very near. But because you have re-established the, the bonds of kinship with your aunt, who is another relative, Allah has increased your lifespan by 20 years. One year later, Shu'aib met Ya'qub, where? In Hajj again. So Shu'aib asked him, hello, how are you? How's everything going? He said, remember last year? He said, yes, I remember the incident. He's like, when I got back to my home, I could not meet my brother again. I was told that he passed away on the way, and he was buried in the way as well. I don't even know where his grave is. Complete separation. As a result of what? Breaking the bonds of kinship. They cut, they severed the family ties. Another incident occurred at the time of our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq Once one of his companions came and said to him, my brothers and cousins have made my life very difficult for me, even in my own house. To the extent that I don't find peace uh, I, um, uh, except in one room of the house. Outside of that room, is, there's always problems, there's always difficulties, life is very difficult. If I was to attempt to complain to them or complain on them to the governor, they would make my life even more difficult by taking all my wealth and all my property. So what should I do? Advise me, Ibn Rasulullah. The Imam Salamullah alayhi said to him, Be patient. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى After hardship, you shall find ease and comfort. The man took the advice of the Imam. He remained patient. Till one year, till one year, a long and strong plague and a pandemic happened in their area in the year 131 after Hijrah. And all those relatives who had caused him trouble, who has done injustice towards him, died as a result of it. Later on, this man visited the Imam Salamullahi Alaihi. The Imam acquired, huh, how are your relatives now? He said, well, they all have passed away. The Imam said, yes, they died as a result of the inconveniences that they had subjected you to. And this is a punishment for their deed, for severing the bonds of relationship, of family relationship with you, since you are their relative. This is their punishment in dunya, before their punishment in the world to come. Then the Imam asked him, do you want them to stay alive? and still inconvenience you? He said, by Allah, no. The Imam said, then, your wish has been answered. Severing 
ties with one's relation is something that is very difficult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is Ar-Rahman, He is the Beneficent, He is Ar-Rahim, He is the Merciful. If Rasulullah is Rahmatan lil alameen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rahmatuhu wa sa'at kulla shay. His mercy encompasses everything. Allah Himself cuts His mercy from the one who cuts his family relations, cuts bonds or severs ties with his family members. This is something that is uh, very important to think of. This means that Allah's chastisement and punishment can come to them at any moment in this dunya before akhirah. When Allah cuts his rahmah, it means they are deserving to be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that is important to keep in mind. I want to share with you one last story with regards to Silatul uh, Arham, uh, but we'll do so after hearing a loud salawat. Also from, uh, from our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamuhu He had a cousin by the name of Hassan al-Aftas. Hassan ibn Ali al-Aftas. He was a cousin of our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamuhu He was the standard bearer in the uprising of uh, in the uprising that's initiated by Abdullah al-Mahd, who is one of the grandsons of Imam al-Hasan, alayhi salam, against al-Mansur al-Dawaniqi. His relations with Imam al-Sadiq turned sour over the differences of opinion, because he wanted to revolt against Mansur al-Dawaniqi, while Imam al-Sadiq decided to stay at home and not revolt against Al-Mansur al-Dawaniqi. So, his relation turned sour with the Imam to the extent that he went and attacked the Imam with a large knife, willing to kill the Imam. Who is he? Hassan ibn Ali al-Aftas, the cousin of Imam al-Sadiq. He wanted to kill the Imam with a large knife due to the differences of opinion. Anyways, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the imam. Salma, who is one of the imam's servants, she says, the imam, salamullahi alayhi, was on his deathbed. And I was, on his bed, I was at his bedside. When he suddenly dropped into unconsciousness, our imam became unconscious. As soon as he regained consciousness, he instructed me, to give 70 golden dinar to Hassan al-Aftas and, you know, some other money or amounts of money to other people. Salma said, I was surprised at the words of the Imam. I told him, you want me to give 70 golden dinar from your own money to your cousin who wanted to kill you? The man who actually attempted to kill you? He attempted murder? Imam Salamullah alayhi, look at his answer. He said, do you not desire that I should be one of those about whom Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلْ وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ وَيَخَافُونَ سُوءَ الْحِسَابِ وَالَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا ابْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِمْ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَ وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةِ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عُقْبَ الدَّارِ Do you not desire that I should be of the ones whom Allah says, and those who join that which Allah has bidden to be joined, and have fear of their Lord, and fear the evil, the evil reckoning, and those who are patient, seeking the pleasure of their Lord, and keep up prayer, and spend, benev- uh, spend charitably, out of what we have given them secretly and openly, and repel evil with good, for such will be the reward of the ultimate abode. Then the Imam continued to say, 
Yes, O Salma. Allah has created paradise and made it pure and uh, its fragrance is so good it can be perceived at a distance of 2,000 years. But this fragrance shall not reach the person who has severed ties with his relatives and one who is disowned and cursed by his own parents. Imam Salamullah Alayhi to his relative who, did, who wanted to kill him he was kind to him and did not sever his ties. So what excuse do we have for cutting, you know, uh, ties with our own relatives over a small issue or a small problem or a small, you know, conflict that can happen or issues of this dunya? That man uh, attempted to kill our imam, yet our imam did not cut that tie. This is a lesson for all of us. For we claim to be the Shia of Ali Muhammad, alayhim afdalu salati wa salam. These are the teachings of Ali Muhammad, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim. May Allah grant us the tawfiq to be amongst those who apply the teachings of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad in their day-to-day -day life. May Allah grant us the tawfiq to be amongst those who maintain their family ties and keep uh, respecting that bond of kinship and Salatul Arham. May Allah make us steadfast on the religion of Islam. May Allah make us amongst the true followers of Amir al Mu'mineen. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayh. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Thabbit Qulubana ala deenik. And lastly, O oh Allah, grant us the tawfiq to be amongst the true servants the true helpers and supporters of Imam Sahib al-Asri was Zaman. Let us recite Dua al-Hujjah together. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma kun li walika al-Hujjah ibn al-Hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abai fi hadihi al-Sa'a وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي إليهم ثواب المباركة الفاتحة تسبقها صلوات الله صل